Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello and welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where my partner John Cole and I get to speak to the fabulous and friendly old Manny Pacheco, right? Manny Pacheco. Hi, Manny. How are you? <laughs> oh, him. <laughs> he got, he's got a list of five names that you talk to every day. And he, he oh, yeah, it's, a, it's Manny. That's who yeah. it is. Right. The, John Mariani? No, it's not him. No, no, no. Manny. No. Yeah, that's, that's hey, right. Wait, hey, you're, right. Not, you're not Debbie Weiss. Just read the name. What are you doing name, here? Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Manny, it's great to see you. And we talk Hollywood with you. We talk forgotten Hollywood. We talk about anything Hollywood. Not too long ago, we were talking about um, how directors and stars collaborate. I, I think I asked you, uh, did they collaborate off screen? Were they friends? And you mentioned a bunch of people who were, you know, hang out together, sure. who weren't making movies. How many, um, how many, I, I know there's some legendary, for instance, I, I think of Elizabeth Taylor uh, had some um, actor friends. She was really close. They were good buddies, you know? Yeah, uh, I can't think of their names, so I'm I'm turning to you. But well, Elizabeth Taylor had yeah a number of, of really close friends. Uh, one of her closest was Roddy McDowell. Yes, mm. thank you. Really, really, I mean, it, it stemmed from those 1940s films, National Velvet, that kind of thing, where they they met, they got to be close as kids, and then they grew up as adults as friends. And the same goes even even closer with uh, Monty Clift, Montgomery Clift, and, mm. and Elizabeth Taylor were absolutely. Uh, just terrific friends. When when Montgomery Clift left from a party at Elizabeth Taylor's house and crashed his car into a tree, and so bad the crash that his teeth were actually in his throat, it was Elizabeth Taylor who ran down to the car, reached into his mouth, and saved his life from choking to death by pulling the teeth from his throat. Oh, my God. I mean, that's that takes friendship. Oh. And that's the kind oh, of nice. friends they were, yeah. Yeah, so th there are lots of actors who palled around together, were friends that the public didn't necessarily know about. Yes. The most celebrated, of course, was James Stewart and Henry Fonda. Hmm. Absolutely. Oh, really? They were they started as roommates, uh, up-and-coming, aspiring actors. One was a Republican, one was a Democrat, but it didn't matter. They loved each other to death. They tried to talk politics once in their friendship, they decided if they were going to stay friends, they would never do it again, and they never did. And they <laughs> stayed, and they stayed friends. And I'm trying to think if they made a movie together. I'm, I, 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 I don't know that they did, but I mean, they might have. I just can't think of it. But boy, would they have been together? Great. Oh yeah, of course they did. The Cheyenne Social Club. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> what was yeah, I thinking? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, of course they did. And I, I think maybe they made another as well. But the Cheyenne Social Club, just great movie. It really showcased their, their friendship. Um, and they had that aw shucks kind of quality about them. I think two Midwesterners end up in Hollywood and uh, they find a, a kindred spirit. And so that's, that's how it worked out. I mean, yeah. uh, they, they, even before James Stewart got married, I think they may have dated the same woman at one point. I mean, at different times. But, yeah. you know, I, th I think that they were that, those kinds of friends. I mean, they just... They just palled around all the time. Sure. Well, a lot of actors, I assume, uh, would would have known each other from maybe acting school uh, or academy. A lot of them would be, um, what do you call it? They would be not assigned, but they were under contract to the right. same studio. Sure. And so they were thrown together. Um, Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney come to mind. I mean, they oh. were... Lots that's, of long friends. That's a classic pair. Yeah, and you know, at the time, Mickey Rooney was at the top of his game, and Judy Garland was absolutely an up-and-comer. I mean, she hadn't even done The Wizard of Oz yet. Wow. And and by the 1960s, when she had her own television show, I, I Mickey Rooney was on the skids. I mean, um, he hadn't even done um, he hadn't done It's a Mad, 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 Mad World yet, and he really was struggling for for work. He was finding it on television. Uh, but it was Judy who came to his rescue and said, hey, why don't you be a guest on my show? We'll do some of the old stuff and let's have some fun. And you can tell the genuine closeness between the two in that 1960s uh, TV show that airs Sunday nights, by the way. And 
it was it was magic. It was absolute magic between the two, and it, it was it was nice to see. Aren't there some stories about uh, uh, some people who came up together from maybe they went to uh, an acting school together? Like I seem to remember Paul Newman had somebody that uh, 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 he remained friends with, but it was like almost like an unlikely pair. Um, no, actually, the, the most unlikely pair that I can think of, and you're going to really be surprised with this one. The relationship, I mean, the lifelong relationship between Marlon Brando and tough guy. He had a friend? Wally Cox. Really? <laughs> wow. But, what? Wally Cox. Oh, no, that sounds so Wally, much. <laughs> Wally Cox, Mr. Peepers? Yeah. Mr. Peepers. Yeah. Wally Cox and Marlon Brando were absolute terrific friends. Wally Cox, in real life, even though he was Mr. People, Peepers, just like Harold Lloyd, was a very big ladies' man. Okay. Very, uh, very masculine in his in his approach to things. You wouldn't know it in his films or on even on Hollywood Squares. Uh, but he was he was not the man you see on television. Completely different. And Marlon Brando was kind of the geek, the 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 jokester, the pal. Uh, Marlon wow. Brando looked up to Wally Cox. Wow. And they would, they, they would he, Mar Marlon Brando would work on a on a project and he made sure that his friend had complete access to any time he wanted to see him. I uh, they, they were just that kind of friend. I, I mean they were friends until the day Wally Cox died. That's great. You know we, great. from uh, we, who, would, who would take it? We spoke yeah. about collaborators of the past but they weren't necessarily friends but uh, John Ford and John Wayne had a pretty special relationship, didn't they? As yeah, we've talked we've talked about that before. They they were, but truth be told, John Ford was better friends with 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 uh, 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 Victor McLaughlin. Um, mm. Yes, you've mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I, yeah. Um, so, uh, um, but I mean, the the friendship thing. I think I think John nailed it on the head, and maybe Art. I think you did as well. You know, you meet because you're at the same studio or or you meet mm -hmm. because you work on a couple of pictures together yeah. or maybe you're struggling and you're going to the same school. You know, a lot of friends came out of those, those method acting schools that were in the right. 1950s. I mean, Clint Eastwood and Eli Wallach were really good friends. And, you know, they, they play really bad guys in the good, bad and ugly. But I mean, yeah. they really got along well. I mean, and you wouldn't you wouldn't think that Clint Eastwood and Eli Wallach were like natural friends. Yeah. But in fact, they were. And, you know, if I if I could just take a moment, you know, I think about the friends that I have. I've got a really close friend. And you got to remember, I'm I'm into Broadway. I love, you know, going to really nice, you know, steakhouses. I um you know, I, I I like going to see movies. I like seeing female pictures, you know, the, the rom-coms. And I got a friend that, you know, rides in rodeos, uh, plays poker, has cha on the back of his, I mean, and we call him Cowboy Kenny. And he's like one of my closest friends and we, we couldn't be more opposite. Yeah. But we get along and we have a lot in common. So you never know who your friends are going to be. And in, in the case of Hollywood, I mean, that exists as well. You just never know when a, a really great friendship is going to pop up. Uh, Dick Van Dyke and Mary Tyler Moore remained friends even after the making of, of, of the Dick Van Dyke show. Uh, and she would call him for advice all the time. Hmm. So, I mean, that there's a there's a natural friendship that, you, you know, that looked like they got along. But yeah. at the time that Mary Tyler Moore was selected, Everybody, and I mean everybody, thought that that was the wrong choice. That oh, Carl Price had made a mistake. Wow! And it, and it turned out to be quite a pick. Yeah. You know, so there you go. Interesting, Interesting. stuff. Uh, I love it when when we can compare. I, I'll call it real life. Our, you know, our real uh, situations with what we think we see in Hollywood. Yeah. Oh, one more I want to mention, if I may. And sure. the relationship between, and, and I, I think, Art, when we were talking off screen, you're the one that brought this up, so I really would like to bring this up. The relationship between Rock Hudson and Doris Day. Uh, 
Hmm. Uh, oh. Jose um, was a true friend to anybody. She she, she um, came in contact. She was really close with Jack Carson. Uh, Jack Carson basically discovered her. She never forgot that. And Rock Hudson, you know, became really her on-screen partner. And all of those fireworks really worked. They remained friends even during the time when uh, folks started uh, shying away from Rock Hudson due to his illness. Uh, Doris Day was not going to have that. She was not. She was going to appear on camera. Even though he looked sickly, she was going to make sure that she stood by his side. And there's a lot to be said for the character of Doris Day. Yes, especially in those times when uh, uh, everybody wanted to disassociate themselves with, with exactly. People. Uh, yeah, going through exactly. age and things like that. Doris Day would have none of it. Yeah. None. Well, that's of the importance of friendship. Yep. Yeah, that is the importance of friendship. Yeah. We should never forget that. So yeah, really, really good topic that we're that we're discussing here, and I'm glad well, we had I, a chance. To I think the, mo the most, the uh, most, uh, besides Wally Cox and Marlon Brando, which I, I didn't know at all, uh, that came came out of left field. So, but you would know that is that you and your rodeo friend. Who would have yeah, thought? Rodeo who would have thunk it? That's um, that's a quite a friendship, and we've been friends now for probably a good twenty years. So yeah, it just you never know. You just right. never know. Well, uh, Struther Martin, mm -hmm. Let me give you one more. Struther Martin and L. Q. Jones, the man who just recently died, uh, mm -hmm. the the cowboy who recently died. He was in a casino. He plays a cowboy in that as well. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. L. Q. Jones and Struther Martin, really close friends, and they were part of Sam Peckinpah's group of of actors. Huh. Another another duo you might not think of. But yeah. yeah, so let me end with that one. Well, thank you, Manny. My yeah, they, they were they were two great character actors. Yes. Um, it, it, I put them in the car in the category of uh, actors I know and love. I just don't know their names. You <laughs> know what I mean? They, I see them so often, and and they you're right, they're gone, and it's a, it's it's a shame. Yeah, but they were friends, and they and they appeared in a number of movies together, and they and they actually insisted that they appear in the same scenes. <laughs> that's that's a that's a pretty unusual request, if you think yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Good, Manny. Thank you so much. You got it. It was a, my pleasure. A lot of fun. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.